by Josfat Boyt to uh, take Eliud Kipchoge into the second half of the race. The second act unfolds, the curtains are parted and Kipchoge is now on the downhill section. I remember many, many years ago doing long, hard training sessions myself. When you got past the halfway point, you always felt you were on the downhill section. That's how you would sort of trick yourself psychologically that you had broken the back of the session. Well, not quite sure that's it's fair to say that here today, whether he's broken the back of this marathon, there's the second half is going to be significantly harder. Well, the hard work starts now and still Kipchoge just ushering and cajoling Boyt into the right position. No doubt at all about who's in charge here, but Boyt, let's salute him again, doing a terrific job here in pacemaking. All the responsibility now on the shoulders of Josfat Boyd. He's been there since uh, the 15 kilometer mark. Kidwara and Kipkamoy, the other two pacemakers dropping out well ahead of schedule. So 21 and a half kilometers gone. Elud Kipchoge, I think will be buoyed by that split 61.06 in control. He's got to be feeling stronger than he did in London when he went through in 61 minutes exactly what some uh, six months ago, less than that, five months ago. But he is on his own here in London. He had company. A group of athletes going through in close to 61 minutes in London. He had a race on his hands on the streets of the English capital. Well, a short while ago, we had a thrilling finish in the men's handbikers. And it was a German victory just by a wheel or so. Vico Merklein from Germany coming home in 64.56 ahead of Josef Fritz from France. And just in the distance there, just behind third place for Michael Jürgensen from Denmark. So the handbikers are over the line and it's a German victory there for Vico Merklein. Thrilling finish and thumbs up for Merklein. Well done, sir. Well, Elliot Kipchoge still looking relaxed. And of course, for those of you wondering what is the point of a pacemaker, well, it just takes the, the psychological burden off your shoulders more than the physical burden. Of course, in windy conditions, you can tuck in behind and get a really strong physical benefit uh, from a pacemaker. But in these sort of conditions, with so little wind, around the streets of the German capital. It's more of a psychological benefit to actually have somebody else lay down the tempo and you can just tag onto them, almost switch off mentally and just stick close to that vest beside you. So the psychological burden is being lifted from Kipchoge with every kilometer that clicks by. Well, they're the chasing group and that gap now between Kipchoge and Kipsang is getting wider and wider. Kipsang now over a minute behind Elliot Kipchoge in second place and that wasn't the plan absolutely bang on the money the pacemaking for Kipchoge he asked for 61 through halfway he got 61.06 that is pretty good going Kipsang though is falling behind his particular schedule and uh, I can tell you that he went through halfway well over a minute behind When will Elliot Kipchoge accelerate? Will he wait for as long as possible until Boyt is done? I suspect Boyt is smart enough to realize that he can't hang on there half a stride ahead of his compatriot and slow down. When he feels himself wilting, then he will have to give the word to Kipchoge. OK, I've done everything I can. I've given 101%. Now you're on your own. And that point will be very significant indeed because Elliot Kipchoge then will have the weight of expectation and indeed that physical and psychological responsibility all on his own shoulders. Well he's more than capable of doing that and it's worth reflecting Tim that 12 months ago of course he did have company the young pretender Adola the Ethiopian in his first ever marathon was still very much up there right into the latter stages of the race with Kipchoge and that spurred him on in fact at one point Adola Stole a march of about, what, 10, 15 metres, I remember, 
at around the 38 39 kilometer mark and Kipchoge gave him a glance as if to say who are you where have you come from and then eventually the handbrake came off and Kipchoge just raced away to victory in uh, very very different conditions indeed but you're right as soon as Boyt feels as though he's done it will be Kipchoge against the clock so 254 for the thir 23rd kilometer again just about perfect pacing there you can see uh, one of the markets Sunday markets because Berlin life carries on as normal for many hundreds of thousands of the populace although they do come out in their hundreds of thousands to support and in a day like this with so much publicity locally and the given to the attacks of the world records it's almost a privilege to be able to step out and watch those athletes go by. Well, there the, uh, the leading women still going very well. Tiranesh to Barber through uh, 20 kilometers. They've gone through the 20 kilometer now, mark now. And I can tell you that Tiranesh to Barber went through in uh, 65.31. And that is uh, just inside still course record pace. But uh, the world record of Paula Radcliffe, I think we can safely say now, will not be happening today in the women's race. There is uh, Tiranesh just getting her drink. Oh, and making a bit of a meal of that. Oh, that's cost her valuable time there. That was a touch of the, the Mo Farahs that we were referring to earlier on. And that is not ideal at all. So Tiranesh to Barber just uh, losing a little bit of time there at that last drink station approaching halfway that's a big pack around the barber isn't it that's almost an inconveniently large pack she's running in the bit in the middle of a group some of those athletes I have to say being hypercritical just a little bit too close to the barber there she's almost got elbows banging her there and that sort of physical space that you want around you is just being imposed upon a little too much for my comfort she may prefer it that way I don't know but I think a little bit more distance could be given by one or two of those athletes to the uh, greatest distance runner in history on the female side make no mistake of that Chris I mean you, you look at her her CV I mean it's absolutely staggering three Olympic goals nine world championship goals that includes goals on the track and the country the Chicago champion I saw her win Chicago last October in 218.31 that was astonishing it was indeed as they go through halfway here in the women's race in 69.03 that is a full minute outside the tempo that she'd asked for she'd asked for 68 and she has gone through halfway in 69.03 still inside course record pace in terms of the actual the actual of uh, Noguchi back in 2005 was 69.19 so Tiranesh de Barber is inside course record pace but well well outside Paula Radcliffe's world record well and Paula Radcliffe during her world record went through in 68.02 so she's just over a second outside Radcliffe's a minute uh, just a minute excuse me a minute outside Radcliffe's uh, time back in 2003 and then Radcliffe remember ran a negative split you're in a much faster second half so de Barber is she's to make any kind of impression and give the indication that one day she can break the world record of Radcliffe. She needs a much quicker second half. Elud Kipchoge, 2.54 for that 23rd kilometer. And still on schedule for a world record by a sizable chunk. And with every kilometer that goes by that Joss Fat Boyd can help him, he will be so grateful on the other hand, once you are there on your own, you can run perhaps with a less uh, impeded state psychologically. Can you see he's almost smiling there to write a picture? One out, ten minutes on the clock. He's well into the second half now, Elliot Kipchoge. And we can take a look now at uh, where he is on the course in relation to the world record tempo. And you can see, Chris, he's still a long way up the road ahead of the average pace for the world record, that green marker. 
Well, he needs a safety net. He needs the cushion that we've been uh, consistently referring to because of that blistering final quarter by Kimeto four years ago. The question is, is that cushion that he's built up enough to deal with that blistering finish from Kimeto? That's the question. That's the tantalizing question. Well, there's the chasing group with uh, Kip Sang, who is more than a minute behind now. Boyt still continuing to lead the way there. A little bit more communication between Kip Chogi. And is that Boyt done? Is this significant, Tim? Well, I don't know. A little acceleration there from... Kipchoge to make sure he got his drink it's all going to plan what a contrast for example to the experiences of Mo Farah in London last April when he stopped a couple of times had to run back to get a drink at one of the earlier drink tables and then he had to run across the road and start discussing things with accompanying officials on motorbikes asking them to go ahead and warn the drinks station uh, attendees that too many of the bottles were similar and that was the big problem in London last April for Mo Farah and one or two other athletes is that rather ridiculously several of the uh, specific personal bottles they go through 25k there in what about 112 25 112 24 too many of the bottles were almost identical 112 24 and let's just gr dive at our charts here and at 113 07 so he's what some 43 seconds ahead, 44 seconds ahead of Kimeto's split at that point. But if we were to take that as an average marker at a 25k, 112.24 still has a Kipchoge on schedule for about 2 hours, 2 minutes and 10 seconds. He's still some 45 seconds or so inside world record schedule. And that is an average taking the average pace into account. About 45 seconds inside world record schedule. And this was what was discussed at last night at the World Marathon Majors function, was that some believed Eliud Kipchoge wants to put the world record out of sight today, not just break it by a few seconds, not by one second or 10 seconds, but really hammer it. Well, there is uh, Wilson Kipsang, who is not even in second place now. Wilson Kipsang not going according to plan at all for him. He's slipping back further and further. And you can see there the orange vest of uh, Abera Kuma. Well, rather bizarrely, those clocks that are on those uh, distance markers are about eight seconds ahead of the clock on screen. I don't know why there's been a slight error, I think, in the timing, but the the times we're getting up on those clocks are different to the time on the screen by quite a chunk. Eliud Kipchoge beginning to break away now. The race is on. He's out on his own. The greatest marathon runner in history. There you can see Kipchoge splits on that first line. 112.24 at 25 kilometers. The world record tempo. The average pace is 112.50. So he's 36 seconds up on that. Boyd's job is done right of screen. What a fabulous job Josfat Boyd has done. 26 seconds. The uh, cushion there ahead of average world record tempo at 25 kilometers for Elliot Kipchoge. Now he will be aware of that. There is a vehicle in front of him which we haven't yet seen and I'm not sure if we will, but it has a number of markers on it, a number of figures on it. So he will be aware of his cushion, so to speak, ahead of the world record schedule. It's a great way of keeping the athletes constantly uh, updated with their progression. Doesn't he look calm, Chris? Doesn't he look really in control? Utterly focused, isn't he? We do spend a lot of time as commentators trying to read into the mind of the athletes. And there we are, look, the smile breaks onto his face there when it's hurting. It must be hurting now. He's out on his own. There are the fastest times in Berlin. Kimeto 202.57.
that the world record that is the target for Eliud Kipchoge it wasn't Kipsang 203.23 the previous year his record only lasted his world record only lasted one year Patrick Macau back in 2011 who announced his retirement just a, two or three days ago the great Kenyan was the previous world record holder the last six world records on the men's side have all been set here in Berlin and you can see why look at the size of the crowd look at the great road surface he's on the flat road surface throughout the course everything clicks in Berlin Kipsang now in third place behind Amos Kipruto. So Elia Kipchoge in a world and a class apart. Wilson Kipsang, who said he would like to threaten, is now back in third place looking to struggle. And look at that gap. Look at that gap between Kipruto in the orange vest and Kipsang in third place. So Kipruto there, wearing number four, is in second place, but a good minute behind. Elliot Kipchoge and Wilson Kipsang, the former world record holder, of course, on this course, now down in third. Well, Amos Kipruto is 26 today. It's his birthday on this mid-September Sunday. His personal best, 205. He's heading for something very much quicker than that. It goes back five years to Amsterdam in 2013. He's a long way back behind Eliud Kipchoge, but still heading for a massive personal best. And at the moment, in second place. Here is the leader, Eliud Kipchoge. Now, what will be fascinating, Chris, is to see how these splits uh, clock by, what sort of tempo he starts moving at. Now he's on his own. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a slight acceleration here from Eliud Kipchoge. I'm not sure if we do, that would necessarily be the right thing. I think he needs to bear in mind that those last 10k are going to be very, very tough indeed. He's still a long, long way from home. I mean, what, 16 kilometers from home. And these next five, six, seven kilometers are crucial. If he judges his tempo and his work rate correctly here, I suspect, then uh, he will hold it together for the last 10k. Well, we await the next major split, which is at 30 kilometers. He should still have that decent cushion, but the key one will be at 35. There we are. Look, he has he has uh, quickened 251 for the last kilometer there, going through 27 kilometers. 251 at 27k. And it was the first kilometer where the majority of it was on his own. I just hope he holds back a little bit here he's such a beautiful looking runner such a fluid runner so powerful so supremely fit that he probably here is enjoying his running but the marathon it can be incredibly unforgiving and it compounds errors it multiplies errors and Kipchoge who is experienced who does know his body well I feel just here in this third quarter of the race needs to hold back a little bit you know he's well inside world record schedule 254s 255s would be fine for these next five or six kilometers then when you're in the last seven eight nine kilometers maybe begin to relax and cut loose a little bit but that is a almost worrying for me I think Chris at 251 one of the it's the third quickest kilometer of the entire race from him with uh, what some 15 kilometers to go I share your concern I wonder if he's being a little bit too gung-ho here in this uh, this latest section of the race he is smiling though we've mentioned it before when the going gets tough and he piles on the pressure very occasionally he breaks into a smile it is uh, quite remarkable that it's Kipchoge as we predicted against the clock Kipchoge against the clock for a world record here in Berlin in 2018 Kipsang is down in third place Amos Kipruto on his Berlin debut on his birthday is in second place but all that is happening way way behind Elliot Kipchoge who's out in front on his own approaching an hour and 20 on the clock well at 25k which was the last significant mark we got a few minutes ago now I know but he was 112.24. Kimeto in his world record was 113.07. So he was 43 seconds ahead of the virtual Kimeto at 25k. 43 seconds. That's a massive cushion. Now, Kimeto, of course, raced incredibly quickly for the last 15 kilometers. And that has to be borne in mind. But even on average tempo terms at 25k, he was 26 seconds ahead of the average pace for Kimeto. So he's got a cushion now that he just needs to manage. He needs to manage this next section of the race. He's got about a third of the race to go. And his judgment 
start for these next 10, 15 minutes is critical. Well, approaching 28 kilometers, and the cadence has, uh, has increased, hasn't it? He really looks very bullish here. The question is, is it too bullish for Kipchoge? There we are, 28 kilometers, 255. He has reined it back a little bit. Don't forget, 251 the previous kilometer, 255 this last one. Yeah, I got him at 121.02 at 28 kilometers. And uh, that, if accurate, has him on schedule still for about 202.15. 202.15 at 28 kilometers for Elliot Kipchoge. What I like about Kipchoge too, Chris, and I alluded to this a little while ago, is the fact that he has gone through, he's got the real pedigree of a great runner on the track, on the country. Dennis Cometo was a road racer, nothing else. Never touched cross country, never touched any track racing. Kipchoge is the real deal. Well, talking of the real deal, Vladis Chirono, the defending champion, of course, is now leading the women's race. There we are, it's all changed, not by much, but Gladys Chirono has just taken closer order. Tiranesh de Barber, who made a rather clumsy pickup of the water bottle at the last station we saw there, and he's just a couple of seconds back with Ruti Aga, the youngster. So it's Kenya 1, Ethiopia 2, Ethiopia 3, through 25 kilometers in the women's race. Really good crowds out on the course. These were bigger crowds as I've ever seen in Berlin, I think. 28 and a half kilometers, Platzam, Wildenaber. And they have come out of their apartments, out of their houses, out of their hotels indeed, to roar on. Perhaps history in the making. Number one on his back, how fitting is that? Here's the defending champion, let's not forget that. Going here for his third win on the streets of Berlin. So he's familiar with this circuit. He's familiar with the feel of the city. The twists and the turns. Not that that is necessarily a prerequisite for mastering a course. But he came here with the usual enormous humility, saying he wanted a personal best. But seeing as his existing personal best is just eight seconds off the world record, many chuckling at that and saying well in other words you want to break the world record but he said personal best would be fine anything quicker would be a, a real bonus and he's building a bonus for himself here today as Elliot Kipchoge I'm sure his uh, wife Grace and his three kids back home in Kenya will be watching this with enormous interest excitement rising all the time back in the Rift Valley with families and training groups and thousands of athletes crowded around their TVs watching every stride of this astonishing athlete you can see the taping there on his calves which is to hold the muscles in place there is a belief that keeping those uh, muscles from vibrating too much saves on energy by a tiny margin but it is all about tiny margins at this level well the men's wheelchair race as approaching its end and what a surprise here because it's the Canadian Brent Lakatos who's got the victory of his life here in a sprint finish coming home in 129.41 what a victory that is for Brent Lakatos Marcel Hoog going for a fifth success in Berlin having to second settle for second place and in third place John Boy Smith the teammate of David Weir and David Weir out of the top three but victory today in Berlin for Brent Lakatos, the husband of Steph Reed, the British Paralympian. And there she is celebrating with her husband. What a victory that is, Brent Lakatos. So approaching 30 kilometers then, Eliud Kipchoge. Still calm, still composed. Focused on the road ahead. Little puff of the cheeks there as he realizes that almost three quarters of the job is done in distance, but some might suggest he's approaching halfway, the 12 kilometer point to go station. 
Here are the milestones. And Chris, each of those records is uh, quite fantastic. Remember, Haile Gebre Selassie, 10 years ago, the first man under 204. Paul Turgat, the first man under 205, 15 years ago now. Derek Clayton, back in 1967, the first man under 210. And Albert Mitchelson, the first man under 230. Well, that's extraordinary, isn't it, how the, the world record has just been chipped away at. And it's worth reflecting also that Kenyans or Ethiopians have won the last 20 races in the men's race. The last non-East African winner of the Berlin Marathon. You have to go way back to 1998. Ronaldo da Costa from Brazil was the winner on that day. And in the women's race, 12 of the last 13 years have been won by East Africans. The last non-East African woman to win this race, Irina Mikitenko exactly 10 years ago well, approaching 30, 30 30k coming up yes there it is he's just uh, about to cross the mats in fact he just has crossed the mats waiting for that mark to be confirmed 126.45 and at 30k Kimeto is 127.37 so some 52 seconds on Kimeto. He's getting quicker. He's getting quicker. And it's looking more and more likely that the world record is in the bag. Yeah, he was 43 seconds up at 25k on actual time of Kimeto. Now that's 52. Well, that means in the last 5k, between 25 and 30k, Chris, he has taken nine seconds out of Kimeto. 43 seconds was the gap ahead of Kimeto's splits. 52 seconds the gap at 30k. But, but, yes, Kimeto. Mind you, Kimeto between 25 and 30k ran 14.30. And I'm just calculating, uh, Eliud Kipchoge there has just run 14.21 for that uh, 5k. 14.21, astonishing for that 5k between 25 and 30k. Kimeto was impressive. Kipchoge, superhuman. There it is, 126.45 to the world record tempo, 127.24. But that, remember, is average pace for the uh, world record. Is some uh, 200 meters or so now ahead of world record schedule. Well, the, the most significant thing, I think, uh, Tim, is when we get to 35 kilometers, that will tell us, I think, definitively, whether we're going to see a world record today for Elliot Kipchoge. Because just to remind you again, that was when Dennis Kimeto put in that blistering 5K split of 14.10 four years ago. So if at 35K, Elliot Kipchoge still has something of a cushion, then I think we can say with more certainty whether we're going to see a world record today. Well, he's at 30K. He's got 42.2K to cover. He's got about 11 and a half kilometers to go. That's around seven miles. Many things can go wrong in the last seven miles as we see Wilson Kipsang still looking composed. He's still moving well. I wonder if he's just managing himself here, Wilson Kipsang, and still heading for a, a fabulous time. And Wilson Kipsang there, I think, just easing ahead of his uh, pacemakers. But at 30 kilometers, he is in third place, I think. Kipchoge went through 30k in 126.45. Amos Kipruto almost two minutes down. One minute and 56 seconds down at 30k. At uh, 25k, excuse me. No, 30k. 1 minute 56 the gap at 30k and Kipsang well he's uh, some 39 seconds behind Kipruto isolated in third place now and there the smile returns to the face of Kipchoge how on earth does he do it running at that speed it must be hurting and still he looks so relaxed super relaxed looks like a man out for a Sunday morning jog which by his standards is what this is, but we could be heading for a little bit of history here in Berlin here this morning in 2018. Are we watching another world record unfolding here? What wouldn't you give for a printout of the thoughts of this man, this astonishing athlete with just over 10 kilometers to go? 
Does he know he's got the world record in the bag? How strong is he feeling? What about the ladies? Well, the ladies, Gladys Chirono, who knows this course so, so well, of course, she's got the advantage over Tiranesh de Barber of having raced here before and won, and she's now leading. And she's leading quite comfortably ahead of uh, Ruti Aga in uh, second place. There we can see, as Tim was saying, a, a lot of male runners surrounding the lead in women but it's now Gladys Chirono who is heading for a third victory here still just shy of 30 kilometers but there is Ruti Aga and there we can see now we're still inside course record pace heading for 30 kilometers that course record which to remind you has stood since 2005 Mizuki Noguchi the Japanese who set that in 2005, 13 years ago. Ruti Aga, don't forget, 24 years old, looking very comfortable indeed. And uh, Tiranesh de Barber, well, is she starting to, to struggle here? Just looking to see where Tiranesh de Barber is. But Chirono very much making a statement here. And she would be aiming to match the likes of Aberu Kibede, Uta Pigby, she was at a, a function that we were at last night, the, the great German, and Renata Kokowska, all of them are three-time Berlin winners. Will Gladys Chirono join them on that list? Well, Gladys Chirono looking very, very comfortable indeed. Former world half-marathon champion, of course, on her way. What a contrast, though. And this is what was predicted, a race on the women's side, an exhibition run almost on the men's. Elliot Kipchoge against the clock. And wasn't it apt that in our pre-feed before with our gun, Elliot Kipchoge said, my greatest competitor is myself. I'm racing my uh, head here, I'm racing my heart. Can I overcome what my legs will be telling me? through the latter stages is in effect what he was saying and at the moment he is uh, getting in plenty of punches he's defeating that challenge from elements of his own body which are saying ease back take a rest gets that drink gets it done the cyclists the backup team doing a wonderful job everything falling into place all the infrastructure is there isn't it and we talk about marathon running and what it takes to break a world record we talk about it as ingredients coming together to make the the perfect cake that's how Haile Gabriel Selassie described it to me a few years ago he said you've got a recipe with certain ingredients and all those ingredients the weather the shape of the athlete the drinks the shoes the course itself all have to come together in the perfect mix to bake the perfect cake that is the world record are we seeing the perfect recipe today Elliot Kipchoge following that blue line around the bends almost to the millimetre. Just under 10 kilometres to go. Not in the home straight yet, but beginning to get to the point of the way, race where he can gather himself psychologically and push for the line. Well, the figure we're looking out for, Tim, just to mark our... Uh... Our viewers card is 141.47. That was the time that Dennis Kamete went through 35 kilometers. 141.47. Well, here is uh, Amos going through. Amos Kipruta going through. 32 kilometers. And looking strong, looking full of running. He's bouncing nicely, isn't he? There's just a real fluency and yet a power it's the way he covers the ground negotiates that corner well that's a daunting sight though isn't it that big big gap up in front of him Amos Kipruto that uh, personal best coming with a fifth place in Amsterdam 205 43 it was actually in Amsterdam 2013 it was uh, five years ago but he has run under 207 twice last year his season's best at 206 that was in Tokyo back in late February on the 25th of February he was third with 206 33 he's gonna go quicker than that today and possibly set a significant personal best 249 for the 32nd kilometer 
for Kipchoge. 32K at 249. That is astonishing. That is the quickest one in the race so far, apart from his opening kilometre, which was a 243. So the second quickest kilometre of the race, and frankly, you can ride off the first kilometre because everybody blasts away from the line to try and get a, a clear run and away from uh, any wannabes. Well, the anticipation is rising here. And Elia Kipchoge, you just sense that he feels the hand of history on his shoulder here today. He's doing everything right. We just had a little bit of a concern that maybe he was being a bit too bullish earlier in the race, but he's put in another absolutely storming kilometre there, 2.49 for the 32nd kilometre. And let's watch out for that 35-second split. We're about a kilometre and a half away. That will tell us, I think, and the smile, Tim, once again returns to the face. How on earth does he do it? Well... 33 and a half kilometers down. What, well, some eight and a half to go. Elid Kipchoge clears his mouth. Again, that half grimace, half smile, puffs his cheeks out again. Well, here we can see Tiranesh de Barber, who is some way down now. Edna Kiplagat has now overtaken. Tiranesh de Baba, there she is, the 38-year-old with all that experience. Edna Kiplagat, one of the nicest women in marathon running, two-time, two-time a world champion. She's now in third place and chasing Ruti Aga and uh, Gladys Chirono. So Tiranesh de Baba now in fourth place behind Edna Kiplagat. So the race not going to plan for Tiranesh de Baba, uh, but they're still inside course record pace. So, 34 kilometers coming up for Elliot Kipchoge. There is a, a small chance that he could go under 32 minutes here with that acceleration at 2.49 for the 32nd kilometer. The previous few kilometers in the 2.51 to 2.55 range. Well, here are the women going through 30 kilometers. Gladys Chirono leading the way, 138. 04 still inside actual course record pace Noguchi the course record holder so far at 13840 so they are some 36 seconds inside course record pace so 34 kilometers has come and gone for Elliot Kipchoge the noise the attention focused upon this astonishing Kenyan ratcheting up all the time. The inflatables appearing again and again. Not any particularly significant points on the course, but just give you that feeling with the trees arched over the right road and the crowds on either side. Must give Kipchoge the feeling that he's running through a tunnel here almost. A tunnel of support. 34 kilometers, 138.11. And that, as you can see, puts him 52 seconds ahead of average world record tempo. The world record 205, 20257. So he's right on the cusp of running around 202 flat here. He might, at the moment as things stand, finish in around 20205. Wouldn't it be astonishing if he could go under 202 here today? And perhaps a, an appropriate moment just to point out that somebody running at two hour speed in this uh, marathon that is being run fairly and according to the rules would be, what, a minute and a half up the road ahead of Kipchoge here, would be five, six hundred meters up the road ahead of him. I'm one of those who thinks it will never happen. Not when you look at the greatest marathon runner in history here, in his pomp, in ideal conditions, with everything clicking. How can anybody conceive of somebody one day breaking two minutes? Although many, many pundits of the sport do believe that they do indeed this next split though will be significant i think this will give us more confidence than ever to say whether we're seeing a world record here today at the moment we are but dennis kometa remember there is the gedachnis kirke in the breitscheid platz which uh, is one of the main features and landmarks on this uh, famous berlin course and was uh, 
played host to the, the shot put in the European Championships, the Athletics Championships, just a few weeks ago here in Berlin, which were held uh, with great success. So approaching 35 kilometers, this is the big mark in this marathon. Well, from here, seven kilometers to go. Kimeto and his world record was on 141.47. So Kimeto was uh, flying at this stage of the race and he goes through in about 141.03 unofficially. I'm sure we will be given that mark at 35 kilometers. But 141.03 unofficially there for Elliot Kipchoge at 35k. And that puts him on schedule. Well, there he is still way, way ahead of that uh, world record average. The green marker is at the average tempo for the world record, and he's still, what, some 150, well, 350 metres ahead of it, which is about a minute at this uh, speed he's moving at. The gap is monstrous. This late in the race, Chris, I can't believe he's not going to resign that world record of Dennis Kimeto from four years ago to uh, history and uh, to second place on the all-time list. You just get the sense, Tim, that he really fancies not just smashing the world record, as we've said, but actually getting under 202. Are we going to see a 201-something marathon for the first time ever? That's, you sense, the goal for Elliot Kipchoge. And we were talking to some people last night who said that he didn't just want to beat Dennis Kimeto's record, he wanted to absolutely smash it to pieces. And he's on course to do exactly that. Well, I'm just checking my chart, Chris, at 35K, if that 141.03 unofficial time was right within a second or two, he is on schedule to run around 201.50 now. He is going to possibly not just break the world record here today, he looks like he's going to break it by over a minute, and it looks like he's going to go under two hours, two minutes. This is Eliud Kipchoge performing optimally. No shoe problems here today. Touch wood so far. <laughs> no wind and rain. I don't think we need to touch any wood in that regard. Conditions perfect. The temperature climbing, but not to anything nearly as challenging as he had to contend with in London. The 35 kilometer splits haven't yet come through officially, but I've got him at 141.03. That against Kimeto's 141.47. So what, some 44 seconds ahead of Kimeto at 35K. And he's still moving well. He's still got that wonderful power and yet relaxed stride with what, 6K to go, 7K to go. He's got his game face on here and just occasionally puffs out the cheeks and just uh, wipes his mouth. All that hydration, all those drinks taken on the little and often, sipping regularly, now starting to work and starting to enjoy the benefits of that hydration earlier on in the race. As Tim was saying, if you start feeling thirsty, it's too late, it's gone. 143.53, unofficially at 36k. And that, yes, puts him on schedule for around 201.45. It's gradually creeping down all the time. The projected finishing mark for this astonishing Kenyan. 33 years old. Many believe that if you can hold together, avoid the injuries, maintain your body well, then you are at your best. You've got those accumulated years of hard training. And you're at your best in your mid-30s. So maybe, perhaps more to come. He's won nine of his ten marathons. The Monza race was uh, set up as a marathon, but of course it broke the rules substantially and so can't really be called a marathon. It was more an exercise in trying to prove what may one day be possible. Look at the bounce there in that stride. He's working here now. He's working very hard. The arms are just a little bit, bit more busy. There's a little bit more activity from the arms. He's bringing the shoulders and arms to the fore. But he knows too that 
his squad back home. Many of them will be watching this. That is, coach Patrick Sang will be willing him to push on here through these final five and a half kilometers. The weight of expectation surely is a positive force behind him. There's that black vehicle to the top right of your screen, which gives him great feedback. It gives him his last kilometre split. It gives him a projected finishing time. And that will give him huge reinforcement too. Throughout the race, he's been aware of how things are unfolding for him. A luxury that wasn't enjoyed by previous generations of marathon runners until this last decade or so. But of course, it gives you continual updates. It's, you can compute, you can work out how you're going and believe me he will be doing that he is a intensely intelligent man he will be thinking about the splits that are coming up and that are being predicted and using that information positively sticking to that blue line to the inch and there once again we see a smile on the face of Elliot Kipchoge through 37 in just outside 146.35 shoulders relaxed he's been on his own now for what 12 kilometers or so the pacemakers departed the final one at 25 kilometers Joss Fat Boyd doing a brilliant job earlier on now that was quite interesting Chris that I got that last kilometer at around three minutes maybe a click outside three minutes for Kipchoge probably his slowest of the race well here is Amos Kipruto in second place who is, uh, well, two minutes behind. Wilson Kipsang in third. And uh, Shogo Nakamura, I can tell you, from Japan in fourth place. And the uh, subplot to this race very quickly is that the Japanese record as well is up for grabs there. And there's a million dollars on offer to the Japanese runner who breaks the Japanese record, 2.06. So 37 and a half kilometers gone. Elud Kipchoge slowed in that last kilometer through to 37K. I got it unofficially at around 302, 303. We'll try to bring you accurate updates of his last few kilometers, but this is hurting now. He's in territory never touched before. It's like a lunar mission heading out to the unknown. Well, your image is absolutely right because uh, somebody described him earlier this year as Neil Armstrong. He's the Neil Armstrong of marathon running. Is he starting to suffer a little bit? Even the great Elliot Kipchoge there doesn't look quite as comfortable, does he? He is hurting, and he's got four kilometers to go. Four and a half kilometers to go. What's that? 12 laps of your athletics track. Three miles of hard running to come. He's built up a big cushion, we know that. 149.19, he's coming up to 38K. What will he uh, clock through there? But he has slowed, there's no doubt about that. Now, this will be significant. If there's a second significant slowing here outside three minutes, then that cushion will be reducing. There, 38 to 1, around 149.37, something like that, at 38K. And if we move to that marker, 254. Well, he's back on song. We didn't get the official mark for the previous kilometer. I think it was outside three minutes. A little bit of shade. He'd probably quite like that at the moment. Top of picture. Eliud Kipchoge going faster than most bikes, probably faster than most midweek traffic in the German capital. Well, he's looking more comfortable, isn't he? If it was a, a three kilometre, here we go. Look at that. Increased. This is the average world record pace, remember. Just inside a minute. Inside world record pace on average splits. Well, according to those marks, 
his uh, 37th kilometer was a 255 so a miscalculation by me and apologies for that if that is correct he is still pushing along well 255 and 254 his uh, last two kilometers the 37th and 38 kilometers 149 37 there or thereabouts at uh, 38 K well that puts him on schedule for about 201.45, can you believe? This is uh, science fiction unfolding in front of us. Absolutely astonishing. Still waiting for the 35K marker to come through on our computers here. So there's something, some little glitch has crept into the works. We can't blame the rain on this occasion. Maybe Elliot Kipchoge getting ahead of the electronics here, such as his lightning speed. And he's applying everything learnt over so many years of hard training, hard racing. When you think that he was world champion 15 years ago on the track, well, you understand what astonishing consistency, what a monastic lifestyle he's been able to maintain. His focus under the fabulous tutelage of Patrick Sang himself, an Olympic silver medalist in the steeplechase, twice a world championship medalist at the steeplechase. Patrick Sang knew how to get there and do it so well. And that is what uh, is being applied here, the knowledge of a fabulous coach. Prove the mark of Dennis Kometo from 2014 by a, a, han a handsome amount. Well, and history in the making here. New target, sorry. Yeah, history in the making here. I think we can safely say now that the the world record will go today here in Berlin. History will be made in the next five minutes or so, and it's a question of by how much. Just getting word from uh, our colleagues that the predicted finish time 20201 he will want to psychologically break that 202 record that 202 mark 40 kilometers coming up for Kimeto. one hour 55 on the clock now for coming for Kipchoge excuse me Kimeto went through this mark 40k in 156.29 look at the time in the bottom of your screen he's well over a minute ahead of Kimeto at the moment 50 meters to go to the 40 kilometer mark and there is no doubt that uh, Dennis Kometa, despite that charge, they hit 40k now. 155.32, the official time. So he is uh, 
almost a minute 57 seconds ahead of Kimeto at this stage of the race with 2.2 kilometers to go Elid Kipchoge well I don't think he'll want to relax but he can oh and he misses a bottle there that's frustrating nobody hunting it out to him that's astonishing at this stage of the race not a soul at that drink station but it was down to him and that is something he practices that will annoy him a little bit apart from the uh, disappointments in regard to the pacemakers over the first half of the race with two out of the three dropping out well before halfway that's the first blemish on his card there there you can see chris 155 32 his split average pace for the world record 156 32 how neat is that at 40k exactly a minute ahead absolutely outstanding and uh, in actual terms it's 57 seconds and he's found again another five seconds in the last 10 kilometers on that Dennis Kimeto world record of 2014. He's getting very, very close indeed into the last couple of kilometers and history is beckoning here in Berlin this morning. Well, when you think about the great athletes who have won this race in years gone by, you think of Kimeto, you think of Beckley, you think of Wilson Kipsang, Patrick Macau, Haile Gebre Selassie, Paul Turgat, he here, is already on that list of winners but he is now atop that list of winners with a third berlin title and surely a world record that is won for the ages quite literally this will be remembered for decades this world record it may stand for decades the paula radcliffe mark proving insurmountable to all assaults by this current generation of female marathon runners and i think this mark will be at the top of the list for many a year. Unless, of course, he improves it himself. Well, that's not, uh, you can't discount that, but this is a real statement. This, is, this will get people looking at marathon running in a, a completely different way. This will make some headlines outside of the sport. There's no doubt about that across the world. Into the last kilometer and a half here. And Elia Kipchoge now with his business face on. We'll watch for the, the smile to come across his face. But this, this is history here. This is quite exceptional marathon running by the greatest marathon runner, the, male, the greatest male marathon runner of all time. 155.32, Chris, has him on schedule for something around 201.50. The 202 barrier looks to be heading for the bin here today. It will have been smashed. It will have been pulverized by this uh, astonishing athlete. This accumulation of years of training, years of focus, application on the track, in the middle distances, in the lower distance races on the track, the long distance races on the track, his CV is almost second to none as a track racer, never mind about as a road racer. He's run a 350 mile, this man. He's run 12.46 for 5,000 meters, 26.49 for 10,000 meters. You wonder how he's ever lost a marathon, don't you? He's lost just one of the 10 he's run. And it looks like he'll have lost just one of the 11. Less than a kilometre to go now for Elliot Kipchoge. If this were a track race, he'd have turned the final bend and be in the home straight with the finish line in sight. Well, he can almost see it. He's on Unterden Linden, that famous, famous street in Berlin. And he's heading for the Brandenburg Gate. Here we go. The crowd's building on both sides. And he's winding up for the last few hundred metres here. And the Brandenburg Gate, those trademark columns loom into view here for Elliot Kipchoge and he's on his way to making history here in Berlin. Well the two hour barrier clicks by now the Brandenburg gate in sight it's about 300 meters from the gate to the finish line Elliot Kipchoge is going to smash the mark of Dennis Kometo which has survived for four years longer than the mark of uh, Wilson Kipsang whose 2013 mark lasted a mere 12 months. But what a glorious sight this is for Elliot Kipchoge. He must have dreamed of these moments. He must have gone through these sights in his mind. That visualization, the glorious Brandenburg Gate. 
into the shade for Elliot Kipchoge, into the sunshine now in more ways than one as the finish line lies ahead of him. He's going to break the two hours, two minute barrier, there's no doubt about this. The greatest performance in the history of marathon running on the male side. Paula Radcliffe's mark remains untouched by anybody so far. This is Radcliffe-esque. This is Elliot Kipchoge in supreme form, 150 metres to run. The crowds of the German capital roar him on. He smiles now. He knows the record is his. 202.57 by Dennis Kimeto, his compatriot, was a magical mark. The first sub-203 clocking. This will be the first sub-202 clocking. And by a monstrous margin, he is going to break the world record. He comes towards the line, raises a sprint on those magical legs. And at last, the world record is his. How fitting is this? The Olympic champion is the world record holder. 201.40, unofficially there for Elliot Kipchoge. He breaks the world record by an astonishing margin. One minute and 17 seconds. Patrick Sang, his coach, his companion for run after run, race after race, year after year, hugs him there. And history has been made in Berlin 2018 in astonishing style. Wow. Simply wow. That was special. Elliot Kipchoge is a history maker in Berlin. And congratulations coming first of all from Mark Milder, the race director. He will be delighted yet again. Berlin delivers. Look at that. Do not adjust your sets, ladies and gentlemen. 201.40, a new world record. And he has smashed it by a minute and 17 seconds. Quite well, astonishing. It was said yesterday that he wanted to put the world record out of sight, lay down a marker that would last for a long time. And I believe we've just witnessed that executed to perfection every stride of the way. Despite the uh, slight issues with pacemakers, two of the three dropping out well before halfway. Wonderful job done by Josh Fat Boyd, who took him well into the second half. A, a word of praise for Boyd, who was quite superb at maintaining the required tempo. But Elliot Kipchoge, look, still full of running, not out on his feet. Nothing Bubka-esque about that. He didn't want to improve it by a tiny margin and leave more improvements for the future that mark may well remain his best for the rest of his life it may well remain the world record for many years to come but i suppose chris records are there to be broken some will say right the next generation of athletes have a new target that is the standard it has been reset everybody has to redial in their ambitions what they think they can achieve well, he's a quiet man, he's a humble man. We don't often see, Tim, displays of emotion like this from Elliot Kipchoge. He is so reserved, he's so humble, true to his roots, true to his background. He's a farmer, for goodness sake, by, by trade and by background. But this is Elliot Kipchoge, relaxed and celebrating, and you can't blame him. Totally deserved. Wow. Three times a Berlin champion now, Elib Kipchoge. He is the master. Here, the second placer, Amos Kipruto. The Brandenburg Gate in sight for him. His personal best, 205.43. He's going to be mighty close to that, I fear. A few seconds outside it. He's got over a minute of running to come, surely. 26 today, though. Some birthday the young Kenyan has given himself some birthday present his best in 2018 was a third in tokyo back on the 25th of february at 206 33 clocking he's going to be quicker than that as he eases his way through the brandenburg gate well the challenge of wilson kipsang wilted before halfway Elliot kiptanui likewise but this is only his second world marathon major experience. Tokyo was his first in February. His personal best goes back five years. And it will remain his personal best, 205.43, coming up any second, but it matters not a jot. 
the plaudits, the prestige, the prize money of second place will belong to Amos Kipruso on this day. He has no track background. Quite a contrast to the astonishing CV of the now world record holder Elliot Kipchoge. But Amos Kipruso eases his way towards the line. No sprint raised by him. His third marathon in the last 12 months, this. He ran under 207 twice last year in Seoul and Amsterdam and here today. A long way under 207 in Berlin. A wonderful second place for Amos Kipruto. Happy birthday. 206.24 unofficially for the Kenyan. And Wilson Kipsang. Wow, he has rallied well. A great champion in his pomp. A great world record holder five years ago. Smiling for third place. He makes it onto the rostrum. 206.48 there for Wilson Kipsang in third place unofficially. He will now hear the news that Eliab Kipchoge has opened a new chapter in the annals of men's marathon running smashing the world record by a lot more than a minute here today in perfect conditions in berlin and you have to say well known to the organizers the event delivers once again supreme organization the logistics for the athletes absolutely perfect and what a run this is by uh, shogo nakamura well he went through 40k in 2.01.30. He hasn't been able to hit that Japanese record, unfortunately. He was looking for 2.06.11 to get that million dollar bonus and break the mark of Yuto Shitara from Tokyo last February. But this is nonetheless a fabulous run. Nakamura then in fourth place it is a huge personal best for him nonetheless it was 210.51 from Otsu earlier on this year it's now 208.16 unofficially he has just taken two and a half minutes and more from his lifetime best Japan have another star at the marathon yeah, confirmation of the top three now coming through. Uh, Kipchoge, it's been rounded down to him. 201.39 now as Tedessa comes through, the world half marathon champion. 201.39, a world record by one minute, 18 seconds. Tedessa, that is a massive personal best for him. At last, at last he's cracked it. The world record holder in the half marathon coming home there in under 209 at the age of 36, the Eritrean, in his fifth attempt to master the marathon, is successful. Well done to him. He's been very patient and he's worked for that. Sato comes through. Yuki Sato, the 31-year-old Japanese, he in around 209.18. That's uh, about 20 seconds outside his personal best, but there will be more to come from him. That's a fabulous run from him. Tadesse fifth, Sato sixth. And another Eritrean athlete here coming through. His time around 209.56. That is supreme running. The first seven in Berlin, under 210. Here, the acknowledgement of Eliud Kipchoge over the final meters of his victory, his third in Berlin, and his world record. And he continues moving well through the line there. That official winning time, remember, 201.39. One minute, 18 seconds improvement on the four-year-old mark of Dennis Kimeto. The world record stays in Kenyan hands. It changes training groups. 
and the first world record of his life while he's been marvelous on the track at so many distances a world junior champion on the country and of course the olympic champion at the marathon he is now a world record holder for the first time and how appropriate is that the first man he goes to celebrate with is his coach well kipchoge has never shown such happiness after winning a major race and the celebrations for germans kenyans and spectators of so many other nationalities dozens of nationalities in the crowd are unbridled big gaps though of course as uh, at all major races with these athletes who have broken 210 in a class apart from the vast majority of the tens of thousands behind them and indeed from so many of the other elite athletes we tend to lose sight sometimes of the quality of runs of 215 217 level well here let's switch our attention to the women's race and gladys chirono the defending champion is on her way has just gone through 40 kilometers the two-time champion is on her way to make it a hat trick and join an elite group of three-time winners of the berlin marathon gladys chirono all the headlines of course were surrounding Tiranesh de Barber. There was talk of a course record. There was talk even of a world record attempt on Paula Radcliffe's mixed race record from 2003. That went to bed very, very early in the race. Gladys Chirono is still on course record pace. She's still inside course record pace. There we are, we can see the uh, the pink red dot of gladys chirono just zigzagging her way she's going to go on to französische strasse then she's got one more right hand turn then a left into unter den linden the course record you can see there almost 400 meters behind so we will have a course record barring any extraordinary late developments here in the women's race we've had a world record in the men's race absolutely outstanding from one kenyan and we have Another Kenyan here, on her way. Tiranesh de Barber, I can tell you, is way down on the field. Over 20 seconds behind she was at 40 kilometers. And Gladys Chirono, who won in 2015 and again last year, is on her way to make it a third title here. You have to say, Chris, that with all the talk of perhaps attacking the world record of poor Lad Radcliffe and wanting to run a very fast time. Tiranesh de Baba has probably done a favor to some of the other leading ladies in that, that she's taken the spotlight off them. There were many who felt that de Baba, rather like uh, Kipchoge, just had to turn up to take the win here. But that was perhaps not uh, giving enough respect to the defending champion. At the age of 35, Gladys Chirono has built up an enormous reservoir of knowledge her personal best was set here in 2015, and she's going to almost certainly improve upon that markedly here today. But the defending champion will remain the champion by the looks of things. She will indeed. She's run another very, very smart race. A very unassuming character. Doesn't like hogging the headlines, just does her talking out on the road. And Gladys, with the number one on her back, is going to join the likes of uh, Beru Kibede, Uta Pivik, and uh, Renata Kukowska as a three-time Berlin champion. There we are, confirmation of that personal best set three years ago. The course record, just to remind you, 2.19.12, held since 2005 by the Japanese runner, Yoshida. And that will almost certainly go today. She's 400 meters inside that course record of Noguchi into the last kilometer now into the last four minutes of running here and it's been another brilliant performance by gladys chirono she's now on to unterdain linden and i can tell you that edna kiplagat who wants to make a bit of history of her own will bring her home as well if she finishes in the top three edna kiplagat she'll be the first runner to finish in the top three at all six marathon majors and that's an achievement in itself at the age of 38 but Today will belong in the women's race to Gladys Chirono. There she is 
inside a minute and a half inside course record pace this of course on average wow she's heading for a quick time but chris this is only her sixth marathon she uh has served her apprenticeship at the lower distance she, she was world half marathon champion back in 2014 but her racing her running style is suited to the fast flat courses like dubai like berlin and uh as defending champion, she knows this course. And that's always, of course, reinforcing, isn't it? If you return to the venue of a previous success, you feel comfortable with it. You look, feel at home there. Happy memories, happy associations, and, of course, the knowledge of, of the track. And here she is, about to go through those magic pillars of the, the Brandenburg Gate. And from there, it's a matter of hundreds of metres to the finish line. She's almost there. The result not in doubt, and it's a question of not if, but by how much she'll break the course record. History once again unfolding here in Berlin. What a moment this is in the sunshine for Gladys Chirono. The course record, Mizuki Noguchi, 2.19.12, not in doubt. That will go. It'll be a huge personal best for Gladys Chirono. 2.19.25, she missed it by just a matter of seconds three years ago. She missed the Rio Olympics through a stress fracture in 2016, but she's back to winning ways here and in the final straight. Listen to the crowd. Brilliant support here for Gladys Chirono. The final few hundred meters. And the cadence quickens. The arms working a little bit harder. Every second now counts. 3.25 that last kilometer. She's now into the last 200 meters. Gladys Chirono, a two-time champion, about to become a three-time champion. Tiranesh de Barber may well have rallied to come through in second place. We'll bring her home very shortly indeed. The finish line in sight. It says Ziel in German, the finish line. And Gladys Chirono working super, super hard. Maybe the inspiration from Eliud Kipchoge of a few minutes ago. Listen to the noise in the sunshine here in Berlin. And Gladys Chirono is no longer a two-time champion in Berlin. She is a three-time champion, and she has smashed the course record just outside 218 as she dawdles over the line. 218-11, a new course record, goes to Gladys Chirono, and Gladys is a member of the three-time club. And in second place, Ruti Aga is going to come home, the 24-year-old, second last year for Ruti Aga, and second again. My word, a new personal best by some distance. And Tiranesh de Barber has rallied and will come home in third place. That is a great recovery from Tiranesh de Barber. So it's Kenya 1, Ethiopia 2, and Tiranesh de Barber. Look at the determination on her face. Another brilliant finish there from Tiranesh de Barber. 218.56. So the top three in the women's race all home. And we have a new course record in the women's race. And it goes to the three-time champion, Gladys Chirono. And a word of congratulations, Tim, from the director, Mark Milder. The first time, I'm sure, Chris, that three women have broken 219 in the same race in its own way. Not only has the course record been set here, but new standards for women's marathon running. Never before have three women gone so far under 220 simultaneously. That is history in itself, and significantly, that course record 218.11 improved by 61 seconds by Gladys Chirono. Ruti Aga, the young Ethiopian. Well, will she become the new number one Ethiopian? She is here today, although she was, what, some 21 seconds ahead of Tirana Shababa, who still holds the national record for Ethiopia. But that will be the next target for the 24-year-old Ruti Aga. Gladys Chirono, three times a Berlin champion. She was injured in 2016, so didn't run Berlin that year. She won a brace of victories prior to today either side of that in 2015 219 a personal best and in 2017 a 220 clocking a year ago was good enough for victory
Well, Gladys Shirano enjoying the moment just as Elliot Kipchoge did a, a little while ago. Yes, yeah, confirmation. It's the first time it's happened in Berlin. The top three in the women's race, all under 219. So history made again in Berlin as the runners still come home over the finish line and it'll take several more hours to get everybody. This is the moment Gladys Shirono became a three-time Berlin marathon champion. And in the end, it was just a, a painful stride over the finish line. But Gladys Shirono, brilliant consistency knocking just over a minute off the course record that had stood for 13 years. Wow. So a Kenyan double in Berlin today in this 45th edition of the BMW Berlin Marathon. And Gladys Chirono, like Eliud Kipchoge, is the real deal as an all-round runner. She has great track pedigree, world-class at 3,000 meters and 5,000 meters and 10,000 meters. And all that has been applied to, to good end today to take that third Berlin title. And here one of the leading Germans coming home, I think. Well, that is one of the lesser lights of the elite men's field. This time just outside 2.22. Still very solid running and to produce times of this caliber, you still have to live that almost monastic lifestyle, put in the hard miles, put in the big performances. Celebration then for Gladys Chirono. Now a fully paid up member of the, the three-time winning club. Abiru Kubede, Uta Pipik, the German, Renata Kokowska, and now Gladys Chirono. And that stress fracture that caused her to miss the, uh, the Olympic Games in Rio a couple of years ago must seem a long way away now. She finished fourth in London in that uh, very, very hot weather back in April. And in the end, De Barber, well, took the pace off, took the took the, the spotlight really off the other athletes, and Chirona could just do her own thing. And that is brilliant consistency now, with three victories in four years in Berlin. She's starting to make this race her own, starting to own the course in Berlin is uh, Gladys Chirono. And a 40,000 euro prize money, of course, for the winner of each of the races and a huge payday of course for Eli Kipchoge as well fifty thousand dollars on uh, fifty thousand euros on offer for a world record which Eli Kipchoge has, uh, has pocketed today but you know what Chris I think athletes of this caliber who are multi multi millionaires in their own environments back in Kenya back in Ethiopia I don't think when they're training hard and they're focused upon a race like this and they produce the goods and everything rolls out well on the day, I don't think they even think of the prize money. We're aware of it. We've got it in our information booklets, of course, and we will give it a mention. But they don't think about the money. They just get the training right. They adhere to what their coaches tell them. And uh, the money and the prizes look after themselves. Wilson Kipsang, what a fabulous run from him here today. Third place in 2.06. 48 second place going to Amos Kipruto 26 today what a birthday present for him 206 24 just outside his personal best but an astonishing world record from Elliot Kipchoge today the defending champion is still a champion 201 39 a massive world record for Kipchoge Elliot when you woke up this morning and you stood on that start line in Berlin do you believe this would be the greatest day in your running life I had a great belief that I will run a world record, uh, but I didn't know I will run 201. I told you know that, that what I was believing translated to 201, and I'm happy for it. You not only broke the world record, you, you, you smashed it to take around about a minute off. That, that is quite superhuman. What next can you achieve in the marathon? 
Well, actually, what next for me is that I have run 2-0-0. I have, I have run 2-1. The next is actually to run 2 or 2 it shows that I have 2 one 2 2 2 2 0 0 2 one 2 2 2 3 2 4 one 2 5 yes. Was it part of the plan that from just after 25 kilometers you would be running solo because that was when the last pacemaker dropped out? It wasn't a plan because I, I thought uh, I will go with my first pacemaker after 30 kilometers, but it was unfortunate. But I had to believe and, and I was really ready for Berlin. I had to push by my own. You've clearly won the Berlin title in all sorts of conditions, shoe problems, heavy rain last year and now this enormous world record i have a feeling you, you're going to want to come back to this course again i always say berlin forever i will come back next year congratulations elliot thank you, thank you. well calm and as eloquent as ever elliot kipchoge after crossing the line there is confirmation of the new world mark two hours one minute and 39 seconds do not adjust your sets. He's improved the world record by 1 minute and 18 seconds, Eliud Kipchoge, today in Berlin. Amos Kipruto, a fabulous second place. Four and a half minutes and more down, but uh, nonetheless a strong run from him with 2.06.24. And Wilson Kipsang, the former world record holder, the former Berlin champion. A third place for him onto the rostrum in two hours, uh, six minutes and 48 seconds. Shogo Nakamura, good run too for the Japanese in fourth. Well, they will come through the arches of the Brandenburg Gate in greater and greater density. These uh, tens of thousands who are enjoying Berlin 2018 in perfect conditions. Well, here, just a summary of the women's race. Tiranesh de Barber very much billed as the favourite to take the title. In the end, having to settle for third place just behind her compatriot Ruti Agar the youngster brilliant second place for the second year running but it was all about Gladys Chirono victorious again this time in a personal best and a new course record knocking 61 seconds just over a minute off the previous mark held by Mizuki Noguchi since 2005. A brilliant performance by Gladys Chirono, a three-time winner here in Berlin. Third time victory in Berlin for you, but did you expect to do so well against Turinish Barber, who has a first, faster personal best, but now you've broken the course record? Yes, I'm uh, so happy because I, uh, my target was to break the course record of today to run under 219, my personal best, and also to run uh, 217, but uh, the last 2K was really hard for me. I was so exhausted and I am happy to run my personal best today. When you made that push, that attack, uh, did it feel decisive when you went ahead of Turanesh and Rutiaga and the others? Uh, I, we were together up to 25k and uh, I was feeling strong so I tried to push the last uh, 20 kilometer. It's getting warm now but were the conditions good overall for you? Yeah, the, the condition was so good so uh, that's made me to run fast today. You're now the Berlin course record holder with 2.18. Uh, do you have ambition to come back and take it under 2.18? Yes, I'm uh, happy also to come here next year to break uh, the course record of today. Congratulations, Gladys. Gladys Chirona then, winner for the third time and uh, the course record holder and confirmation there of the top three. A Kenyan double here in 2018, Gladys Chirono winning for the third time ahead of the Ethiopian pair Ruti Aga watch out for her second place for the second year running and a slight disappointment I'm sure for Tiranesh de Barber who played her part but faded to come home in third place and still they come and they will continue to come for several more hours as the temperature rises and the atmosphere these uh, runners still only at uh, 12 kilometers they've got a long long way to go 